check out all of our stuff. Cat's Pajamas SC2 on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Justin.tv. And Ask Joshi on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube.com. We've been casting all of the matches since uh, late Friday night after Wombat and Adebisi filled in for us. And now uh, we're in the loser's final. Only two series to go with a potential for a third. And select an Optic Zero. It's on them now to try and uh, battle off EG Axlav and EG Strifecrow to enter the grand finals. Axlav and Strifecrow, after taking that 3 0 drubbing in the winner's final, definitely want to try and stay alive as well. But I think hopefully morale isn't too low and they'll be able to show some uh, great games here against Team Sup Suns. High Orbit is going to be the first map that we see, and there will be a little bit of a change here. Select an Optic Zero, actually Terran and Protoss, instead of just seeing that TZ versus TZ. Uh, yeah. I think we'll be seeing some some gateways and stargates and things this time around. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to say we're probably in store for somewhat of a macro-oriented game. But I've got to say, you know, Axlov and Strife Crow were showing that they like the mid-game, or not mid-game, but like the early-game aggression against Cats and Druby. Cats and Druby were just better at it frankly um so it could still play to their strength in the weakness of select and optic zero as we kind of saw yesterday they fell prey to quite a bit of um just mass tier one unit aggression so we'll see if they have some sort of response for that here countdown has started high orbit is going to be the map and the countdown has ended and now the loading screen has begun <laughs> It's kind of silly. They should perhaps do loading and then a countdown so everyone knows right when to click their command center, Nexus, or Hatchery. But either way, here we go. Dignitas Select, our new Terran player here today. He is the blue one here on the bottom left side spawn of High Orbit. His teammate is going to be FXO Optic Zero. He is the pink Protoss, and he is playing from South Korea right now. He's with the rest of his team over there in the GOM TV Foreigner house at the moment, so big thanks to him for actually still making it. I don't even know what time it is over in South Korea, <laughs> but I'm sure it's not super convenient for him. Over on the other side, we do have EG Strife Crow again as the yellow Zerg and his teammate EG Axlav, the red Terran, usually Protoss player playing Terran here for this 2v2 tournament. So here we go. We are back on high orbit once again. If you guys remember, this is the map where you have the big ramp at the front of your base, but no easy expansions because you either have to take down destructible debris and expose yourself to the flank attacks from the right, or you would have to go after this gold here in the middle unless you want to try and secure this spot at the top left. So relatively difficult to take subsequent expansions here. Looks like Select and Optic Zero are going to do something we saw out of them yesterday, which was do kind of a shared... Uh, wall there at the front, more than likely Optic Zero is just going to put up a, well, I guess he really can't do a Forge Fast Expand in this game. Um, so this is going to be Gateway first. In all the maps where there was an easy expansion, uh, Optic Zero was doing Forge Fast Expands, but that's not really viable on this map. He is instead going to put down a Gateway, and I'm curious to see what he ends up bringing out in this match. That is an interesting point that he, there is really nowhere to do a Forge Fast Expand, even like Gold Base out in front has destructible debris there, so it would have to be a forge slow expand. But uh, <laughs> Strife Crow getting his spawning pool up now. Optic Zero, I mean, we watched a lot of games with Select and Optic Zero over the past two days, and almost all of them involved pretty quick Banshees and a lot of Phoenixes. The ones that they didn't do that ended rather gruesomely and quickly, but uh, Axlav and Strife Crow, I haven't actually seen any games out of them until that last series against uh, Assassins, I'm not sure what sort of uh, methods they've been employing, but Stripe Crow is going to be expanding pretty quickly here. I'm not sure if that was a 15 hatch exactly, but um, it is pretty quick in comparison to what we've seen out of the last series, and here um, no one else is expanding this quickly either. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really not sure what path both these teams are going to take. <laughs> I would assume that they've been at least scoping out each other's strategies as time's been going along. Certainly... You know, Supsons did go ahead and watch that last set, I would imagine. Uh, second Assimilator coming down now for Optic Zero. He's also following with a Cybernetic score. And here's the full wall coming down from Select. He's going to finish that up with a Factory and a Bunker. But I'm really curious to see what Strife Crow is planning to do if he's just going to use this for production and just do mass speeding aggression or something like that um or if this is going to turn into some sort of a macro build altogether i'm honestly not sure uh, we really haven't had a chance to see macro builds develop except in the matches with fxo optic zero and dignitas select as they kind of force those to happen with heavy air units as you mentioned before so 
Huh. Okay. This is going to be kind of interesting. We're in for some sort of a macro game at the very least. I can already tell that Optic Zero's like got an itchy... <laughs> I mean, he's making two more gateways now, but I can sort of tell just by the way he's building things that he wants to expand and get Stargates up. Uh, his teammates select still just sticking with that pretty quick starport. I'm not even sure where he's building it. A couple of times, oh, there it is in his main. A couple of times yesterday and the day before, he was building those starports very close to his opponent's base uh, just so he could get that Banshee in even quicker and do more damage before that detection shows up. Axelab getting his starport up now. He's building a tech lab on the factory, so I'm wondering if that's going to be a swap -a or not. Uh, usually you do want to crank out some Hellions with that factory before doing that, but if he doesn't build anything here in the next few seconds, I'll just go ahead and assume that that starport is uh, intended for that tech lab, or the Vice versa, Tech Lab intended for the Starport. Roach Warren coming up now for Strife Crow, so we do have a little bit of a clue of what he's doing. This second base here still has no Vesping uh, gas income at all, so uh, the Lair Tech may be delayed a little bit, but uh, Stargate coming up now for Optic Zero. He is a big fan of those Phoenixes, eventually probably going to be getting up to three Stargates if he can manage to expand somewhere safely. Uh, Select and Optic Zero actually might be able to take like the bottom right uh, sort of back-to-back -back expansions there if they were able to fortify it well enough with bunkers and cannons and things, so maybe that will be their option, but Axelab getting out a Viking first. Okay, so I was totally wrong about the tech lab. Viking, medevac, and now siege tank, so marine tank going to be Axelab's composition of choice to complement Roach Ling out of Strife Crow. I'm wondering if this is a timing that they've done quite a lot. Well, I was operating under the same assumption, so you, you had me right with you, which was the... Uh, which was going to be the swap here and go right into Cloaked Banshees, especially with as much gas as he had saved up at the time. Uh, he's not researching Siege mode yet. I wonder when that's actually going to happen, or if he's just going to save the gas and put that into tanks and early air units. Axelos sending across his Viking, and uh-oh, this may intercept the Banshee, and it does! Banshee is going to have to back off. There's no Cloak whatsoever coming up for Select, so that Banshee has essentially been rendered useless. It looks like uh, Team EG, or at least Axelav, was uh, watching all those games yesterday and seeing, you know, hey, Select builds a Banshee every game. <laughs> Optic Zero builds Phoenix every game. Maybe we should open with a Viking. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty good uh, learning your opponent's strategies before you actually play them. There's three Phoenixes already out for Optic Zero, and uh, he is not slowing down, still building a fourth there. Uh, select just spamming production facilities. Really, I see two more add-ons coming along. Uh, we have a Marine and Siege Tech both uh, coming along as well. Four more Roaches and two more Lings for Strife Crow. I don't know when the last time I saw a drone in the production tab for Strife Crow was. Nope, he has been Roachling producing for an enormous amount of time now. He's up to 12, now 14 Roaches and 20 Lings. He's also putting up a bunch of Spore Crawlers at the moment. Wants to remain defended against any sort of air units as we do have the first round of, of uh, sorry, Phoenix is coming out now for Optic Zero. At the same time, a Banshee is flying its way over to Select Space. Looks like these air units are going to work in conjunction with each other. Axelov does have a number of Marines and a Viking. He will need really good control, though, uh, because of the much faster Phoenixes are able to make their way in and do some damage. However, there is a missile turret up. Oh, these Phoenixes start to to engage this force over here they can't do so and look at this this air force that was subs on saving grace in so many matches now rendered useless yeah too many sport callers turrets vikings marines lots of anti-air uh, prepared from this EG team. Strife Crow's fighting units don't have any anti-air there, so open field is actually going to be the best place for Optic Zero and Select to try to engage here. Uh, only two Vikings in the air. Those Phoenixes could actually get in there and kill the Vikings if not for the solid Marine count on the ground. So it looks like Axelab and Strife Crow are just going to inch their way forward, keep throwing up static defense and things back at home. The Queen does get picked up by those Phoenixes, easily going to be nuked down. There's a siege tank somewhere, just blasting. Yeah, Select's already prepared here with some stagger siege tanks, blasting away at those lings of Strife Crow, so he's going to send in the Roaches first. Axelav should have siege tech finished by now. I didn't actually see it in the production tab, but I can only assume. No, he does no, he not doesn't. have siege tech. Wow, this is a very gutsy engagement. Lots and lots of force fields coming down from Optic Zero, and still all these Phoenixes so fast, already back in the fight. 
tanks don't even need to be lifted because they don't have siege tech. And it uh, looks like Select and Optic Zero are just going to repel this easily and score a lot of free kills on the retreat. Yeah, absolutely. Most of these roaches are going to go down. We already see a significant supply disadvantage now for Team EG. Uh, 121 supply against 164, so very, very nice job by Subsums. Wins that engagement very solidly. They're just going to move back and continue to deny Overlords all over the place. Uh, Strife Crow had these just kind of placed willy-nilly across the map. Yes, willy-nilly. Um, there are a few over on the left-hand side as well. So it's going to be pretty easy for Optic Zero to get in there and do some pretty significant damage. Strife Crow, oh yes, his roaches all rally. That's going to allow these uh, zealots to start making their way in and do some pretty significant damage. The queen does go down. These roaches are going to be trapped as well. And eventually we will see these spore crawlers fall, and that'll allow the phoenixes to get in there and try and do some damage as well. At the same time, engagement is going to be forced here over at uh, Axlov's next base. The siege tanks are doing their damage, but I think there's enough here from Strife Crow to bust through this. Oh, but look at the marine reinforcements now for Select. He is going to bust through a lot of those units. Yeah, Optic Zero actually taking part as well, lifting those siege tanks just to protect the marines and the rest of those little gateway forces that we saw there. Select and the phoenixes all contributing there. Two void rays show up in a perfect time to actually help mop up here. And it looks like that hatch is still standing for Strife Crow. I'm not sure how he was able to defend. Oh, actually, he wasn't able to defend. <laughs> Everything's dead except for the hatch. So the phoenix, void ray, and now marine medevac combination here. Really, all they've got to fight against are these roaches. Axelab just does not have enough stuff right now. Now you can see in the production tab he's making as much as he can, but uh, right now Select and Optic Zero really don't have too much opposition here. Even the roaches from Strife Crow huddling into a corner just waiting for Axelab to come help reinforce. Yep, and now this uh, command center is under fire. The tanks have seized themselves up here next to the Zell Naga Tower. This is a uh, really, really convenient Zell Naga Tower. It gives you entire vision of the mineral line, everything here over at the gold. And it's going to be very difficult for Axelov to be able to repair this. He's bringing back all of his SEVs at the moment. It looks like that is starting to go up slowly. Ah, it's actually a tug of war. Now it looks like because of the loss of all the SEVs over to the side, Select running in with his Marines, he is going to be able to take out that gold expansion. And now here comes the final push out of Optic Zero and Select. Uh, Select just some spamming stim, basically. All the Void Rays did have full charges there for a second, but really it's not even necessary. Axelov and Strife Crow. GG out. They just could not keep enough of their units alive. They built a stout defense against that early Banshee and Phoenix pressure, but it just wasn't enough as more Void Rays started to roll in, more Siege Tanks started to roll in. It was, um, it was just basically a, a steamrolling after that certain point where uh, Axelev and Strife Crow gave up their position just outside of Select's natural or the gold base, I guess I should say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there we go. Very, very convincing win there for Optic Zero and Select. Um, you know, especially after that early part of the game where, like you were kind of mentioning, Optic Zero looked like he was itching to get out more Stargates, and you just, I, I just kind of thought to myself, well, he's not going to have an expansion. It's going to be really difficult for him to establish heavy Stargate play once again. Um, but he proved me wrong Select, entirely. Select could have been feeding him. And again, we don't That's know. That's very true. Because yeah. there's no actually built-in infographic or anything to uh, assist us with that uh, facet. So Select could have just been like, hey, I'll take the gold base, make a planetary fortress, and then they'll never be able to take it, so I can just spam you minerals and gas from there. Yeah. So it's, it's possible. Select did have a pretty efficient force there with a lot of marines and maybe a handful of siege tanks. So it's possible that he was feeding him to uh, just spam two void rays at a time. Okay, and it looks like our players are ready to go. EG 